guys and welcome back to my channel so as you can see I'm doing something a little different today um, I got some things downloading and I don't want to slow them down so no game playing today I'm just gonna be throwing it out at you um, and I had a friend say that if I'm gonna talk about different stories in education and stuff I should probably not be playing the game it seems a little busy so we'll try this we'll try this out we'll see how you guys feel about it so Today I'm going to be talking about different terrible experience, experiments, human experiments that happened throughout uh, human history. Uh, most of these happened uh, before World War II, during World War II, and then some in the 60s. Soon after the 60s, um, actually the Milgram experiment and the Stanford prison experiment are some of the ones that led to them actually creating, you know, laws and things they had to abide by which made human testing which does still happen um safer and not so nutty so first like i said we're going to go over the milgram experiment so the milgram experiment happened in the 60s and 62 and what they did it happened out of i want to say yale they sent out um a newspaper ad and door-to-door -door solicitations for men to come and uh, be a part of this experiment. Now they told the men that they were going to be a part of an experiment that would uh, that's going into how does the human mind learn and that they would be uh, inducing shocks on people if they got something wrong to see if the human mind learns better with pain involved pretty much. Uh, but what they didn't know was that actually nobody was getting hurt in the experiment. It was actually an actor in the other room yupping it up, you know. They would claim they had heart issues, all this kind of stuff, screaming, get me out of here, while a doctor was standing behind them in a white coat being like, please continue, please continue. And in front of them, they had a shock board that started at very low and went all the way up, and even the all the way, the highest one had like triple X danger on it. And the, they wanted to see how far would humans take it if they were just being told to. Like, uh, this experiment came from the idea of the Nazis pretty much doing these terrible things and how much of it was they, their individual person wanted to do it and how much of it was it because it was an order. So they found... Before they started the experiment, they asked students and other therapists, how many, how much of a percentage do you think will go all the way and possibly hurt another human just because somebody in authority tells them to? And they actually came back with a real low ball number. Uh, most of them were like 3%, maybe, maybe 5%. Um, what they actually found was... 65% now I did find I'll say 50 to 65% because I found a really old video like black and white of the actual test subjects and that one said 50% but uh, more recent videos are saying 65% so um, depending on where you're reading it from but there was a lot and they put this out now s most scientists have rejected this and have tried uh, duplicating it which honestly even in the duplications they didn't find much difference in those answers uh, but they did find that uh, pretty much over 50% of the population if told to do something horrific as long as they have a person to go but he told me to do it will do that um, now people debate this test just because one it was all male uh, which a lot of these tests are and so it's hard to say you can't run female and male as the same thing if women would do the same thing and then also that they uh, went door to door and they put these people were getting paid to do this so they went with the idea of you know if they're getting paid they may be afraid to they're gonna lose their money um, but either way like I said they've tried to recreate this in more healthier ways uh, but it, it still remains the same if the government tells people to do something they're likely to do it uh, any authority figure is likely to do it. So keep that in mind. So our next test um, is kind of messed up. I found some articles on this little guy, little Albert. And he, <laughs> so his doctor, scientist person was like, I see Pavlov and what he did with these dogs, making them drool with the bell. Okay. Um, I want to see if humans have that. Can humans be conditioned? But for some reason, in his sick mind, 
He went, give me a nine-month-old baby, and I'm going to scare the shit out of this baby. I'm going to fuck him up. <laughs> like, he didn't physically hurt the baby. He would show the baby a bunny, little baby Albert, and when the baby would smile and go for the bunny, he'd hit a hammer on a pipe right behind the baby's head and just terrify the baby to where he did condition the baby to fear fluffy white bunny dolls. So this is highly unethical because one, the baby cannot consent to this. The mom didn't know fully what was happening. Uh, she definitely didn't consent to this. I found one article that said little Albert and he never actually tried to uncondition him. He was just like, oh, that's cool information and sent him out into the world. This is also terrible science because little Albert was the only test subject. There was no other test subjects to work off of. So this, is, this isn't this is even considered a science experiment. This is literally just torturing a child, which is horrendous. I found one video that said little Albert actually like never learned how to speak, barely learned how to walk and ended up passing away. But I did only find that from one source, so uh, this guy never checked back in, and the mom was pissed about it. Uh, so, unfortunately, little Albert being tortured for some guy's weird fantasy. I don't know why he couldn't give little Albert just some cookies or something. Like, why wouldn't the... If you wanted to recreate Pavlov's experiment, why wouldn't you give little Albert a reason to drool over scaring the shit out of him? You know? Just kind of messed up. Next we have, <laughs> this one's real obvious to me, but maybe back then it wasn't that obvious. They did this in like the early 1900s. It was the positivity and negative feedback test where they wanted to know what helps kids learn better, positive feedback or negative feedback. And so they went to an orphanage and they got 10 kids and put them in groups of five. Five of the kids got positive feedback and five of the kids got negative feedback. And they told these kids that they were working on speech impediments. Some of the kids had stutters, some didn't. So the positive feedback was, you know, don't even think about your stutter. You don't have a speech impediment. You're awesome. And the negative feedback was, don't fucking speak unless I can fucking understand you. You're a piece of shit. And uh, would you, wouldn't you know it, they found that when you talk to people positively, they have great confidence. And when you talk to them super negative, they shut down, they don't have good confidence, and they probably created serial killers in doing this, but they'll never know because they said, thanks for the info, kids, back off to your orphanages, and never check back in on them at all. So who knows what happened to those kids? Maybe they created the Ted Bundy. Now nah, he had a family. They didn't create Ted Bundy. <laughs> the next one... Um, so we're gonna head over to Russia for this one. Oh yes, and for that one, they also how they told them they were gonna fix their stutters, positive and negative. Neither one fixed their stutters. They had stutters. Um, it had no effect. It was just on their confidence of speaking with their stutters, while feeling good about it or feeling bad about it. <laughs> the next one we're heading over to Russia. Russia. This one is very vague. Um, it's just that they did experiment with poisons. They had a special doctor and they would take the prisoners from the gulag and they would just pump them full of different chemicals and see what happened. Their ultimate goal was to create a, you can't smell it, you can't see it, you can't detect it at all poison. Um, and they did all these tests on the gulag guys, probably killed a shit ton of them. We will never know, you know. Uh, but they did end up creating something to hide into the tip of an umbrella and they killed uh, some English dude this way they walked by him poked him with the umbrella and kept walking and the dude died from the poison so I mean they were creating some James Bond shit um, but I can't lie when I read this I was like well it's Russia <laughs> we kind of expected it out of them in the gulags um, next we're gonna head over so if you're American like me and you're going well at least we don't do that <laughs> no we're bad too we're very bad too so Back in World War II, we had San Jose Island. And this is where they wanted to test the effects of mustard gas. Mustard gas. <laughs> and what you'll find is they believed that melanated skin was uh, not necessarily impervious to it, but it didn't affect it as much. So, of course, they took a shit ton of black and Puerto Rican soldiers and just mustard gassed them like crazy. I mean, just putting it on their skin, throwing them in gas chambers, just lots of mustard gas. And the most horrific thing about this 
And I know what you're thinking. Uh, testing mustard gas on them, which is horrendous. Uh, no, no, they made it so much worse. Because after these soldiers, who of course survived being mustard gas, but it destroys your, they had skin lesions, cancers, their lungs were fucked up. After that, the government said, hey, I don't know you. <laughs> what benefits? Who were you a soldier for? We don't have you on the docket because this was a top secret thing. So they didn't even support these soldiers at all. None of these soldiers got support, recognition, anything until 2015. Oh my God. The survivors who were still alive. Fucking A of how many could that have possibly been? Um, finally got some benefits in 2015. I, this one made me so pissed. It, oh, it made me angry. Um, cause what the fuck? What the actual fuck? And don't worry, America, we went right along with this, uh, to the Tuskegee experiments. Now this one actually happened a little bit before World War II, like right in that sweet spot of it starting. They wanted to test the effects of syphilis on the human body, more specifically the black male body. Um, cause they felt like black people were more prone to get syphilis. So they, they didn't inject anybody with syphilis. And actually this experiment in itself wasn't a bad experiment. They just had, uh, what was it? 600 people. Yeah. 600 people. 399 of which already had syphilis. They already had it. And the rest had, didn't have syphilis. So that was their control group. So they, and they were just going to watch them pretty much check in with them, see how it was affecting their bodies, their minds. When was things going downhill the most, you know, which is fine. But here's where they got fucked up. See, during the experiment, um, we found out that penicillin could cure syphilis. Yay. But these scientists, instead of going, oh, I guess we don't need to do this experiment anymore, guys. Go ahead and give them the medicine. This is awesome. <laughs> Job well done. They went, mm, I still want to see what happens to these guys. So they went, one, so far out of their way to make sure these people never got fucking penicillin. Um, they gave them fake medicine to think that they were getting the medicine. They called every doctor in the area to make sure they never treated these people. Uh, they even went as far as, because the draft was happening, uh, calling the U.S. government and going, we're experimenting on these guys. So if you draft them or whatever, don't cure them at all. And the fucking government, of course, was like, yeah, sounds good. Let's do that. Uh, so unfortunately, these guys went around, one, thinking they had been cured because they were giving them medicine and stuff. So they spread it to their wives. They spread it to their children. Um, and once again, they were never fucking compensated or acknowledged in any way until many a decade later uh well the 70s but still it's mm, that's pretty fucked up guys that's super fucking fucked up <laughs> like what the fuck was that i could drop a lot of f-bomb that is so f-bomb worthy i don't even know because that just was torture and when they were asked like why why was this necessary why did you not tell them they gave the excuses of um, one, they didn't think black people would even want to take medicine. So why tell them about it? Which is just what that's, that was dumb anyways, because if you think about it, mm, you were having to give them fake medicine to keep them from taking the real medicine. So obviously these people wanted medicine that, that <sighs> um, yeah. So, and this so that's bad. That was bad. That was real bad. Um, but I'm going to go ahead and tell you guys right now, if you have sensitive stomachs, this is probably the part to jump off. If everything up to this point has made you go, oh my God, this is disgusting. This is horrible. Go ahead and jump off now. You're not going to want to hear these last two because they are the worst of the fucking worst. The most devastatingly chilling, just horrendous. Um, human torture. This wasn't even human experimentation. This was just human torture. Uh, and of course, our first one is uh, Dr. Magna Mengdala. Dr. Mengdala. Uh, he was a Nazi. So this was Nazi Germany, World War II. <laughs> he, 
he was obsessed with twins and he would take them he would find them and he would take them and of course the nazi government let him do this because they were obsessed with finding the perfect human pretty much the the perfect being so he told them that twins were the way to find this and he would take these poor people children to elderly the age did not matter infant okay and he would he wanted to see if he could make brown eyes blue so he'd inject different chemicals into their eyes um he would amputate arms legs uh, just to see, does the twin feel it? Does Is this effect anything between them? He would inject a twin with some type of sickness, uh, very deadly sicknesses like smallpox and shit, and then, then kill, like, so wait, let that sickness kill that twin, and then take the healthy twin and kill them so he could autopsy and see what's uh, happening. He would also just do live autopsies. Let's just take out a kidney. Let's just take out a heart um, on these people. And the worst part of this, these. <laughs> uh, he, there was no anesthesia. He did there was no attempt of anesthesia. There was nothing. He was just chopping these people into bits horrendously. Just, I, mm, it's really bad to think about, especially the children. Like, I mean, anybody in it, but it's super bad. And then I know what you're thinking. Well, that's it. That's, that's as bad as it gets. No. No, it's not. The Japanese had Unit 731. Um, but this unit was stationed in China? Or they just fucked with the Chinese a lot? Um, these guys took Mangala's ride and went, hmm, let's just do everybody. I don't need to know about twins. I just want to know about everybody. Their biggest one was they wanted to know how frostbite affected the human body so they would freeze different limbs on people and they'd set them on fire um they just leave them out in the hot sun they would leave them out in the cold see what happens um just all types of things once again <laughs> no anesthesia these are not dead people they're just pulling uh prisoners out and doing this to them they were also curious about syphilis apparently they were curious about a lot of infections they wanted to see how they could spread infections and stuff so the syphilis was one of them and so they would have uh, syphilitic men rape the women in the jail and then see how long it takes them to get infected and all that good stuff uh they would also do live autopsies just hey now that you have syphilis come in we're gonna go chop you open while you're alive and stuff <sighs> they would also have the guards rape the women and then uh do experiments on that woman, whether it be give her a sickness or chop a limb off or anything like that, and then do a live autopsy, cut the baby out to see what happens between mom and fetus of, you know, different sicknesses and things. They also wanted to play with the plague and they wanted to create plague bomb, plague bombs that they actually set off in different parts of China, which is crazy. And then... <laughs> Once it all got shut down, the war ended, everyone went home, they had the doctors swear to not to tell a soul, and they apparently didn't. They We did not find out about this place for a long time, um, killing most people. Those plague rats they had just lying around, they just released them. They said, boop. <laughs> so, that's nice. That's always nice to just, we ah, got a little plague left over, chuck it, <laughs> just let it out, let's see what happens. Um, so yeah that's as bad as it gets that's that was the worst that was probably as far as i could get um i'm pretty sure mandala and 731 do go down as some of the worst human experiment and i say human experimentation but there's no i don't see where there was actual experimentation happening i really feel like these people were just like i just want to fucking murder people and that just feels right to me so and i think what angers me most is so many of these from nazis to the Japanese, all of these doctors and stuff usually got off. Um, other, even America and other countries, Argentina and stuff, uh, let the doctors come over because uh, we wanted to know what they knew, and so they got to live wealthy lives here. It wasn't even like bad life. It wasn't. They didn't go to Gitmo and have to stay there and tell us their secrets. No, they got full pardons and 
It's terrible. It was fucking terrible. And the 731 doctors were no different. They didn't come here. They just went back to Japan. But same thing. Just, eh, you don't talk about it. We won't talk about it. You're a doctor. We got you. It's pretty fucked up stuff. Um, so that is, that's all I got for you today. I hope that disturbed you. Because <laughs> it definitely disturbed me. Um, so come on back. I will post another video uh, Saturday. And... I think we're going to go down a presidential route. I think I'm feeling silly. After this, I got to do something silly. So, um, follow me. Please follow, like, comment. Comment anything you want to learn about corrections. If I got anything wrong, uh, please let me know. And you guys have a great day. Bye.